welcome to Fitbones, fellow bikers. Um, today, I thought I'd talk about uh, another unicorn issue that's been gnawing away at me for a little while. Um, the last 10 to 15 years of motorcycling, where I've traveled pretty well around several continents, um, I've always just used my iPhone and some basic paper mats. And that's got me out of trouble really over the last 10 to 15 years without any problems. However, in 2015, I was in La Paz. Very hot day, lots of traffic, so slow moving. And my old iPhone here gave up on me. It went the, the dreaded black screen from overheating. And that kind of alerted me. Um, I had to get off the bike several times en route through the city, stop, have a coffee, put the phone in a freezer, chill it down, then it was fine. But it alerted me to the fact there are some issues with, um, with phones, uh, and unless you carry a backup, and you drop your phone, maybe break it, you could have some problems. Um, and then I returned back to South America in 2020 with a couple of mates. Uh, two of us were on PR7s. Um, and the wonderful thing about the PR7, it's a bit of a unicorn bike, as people know, but it came factory fitted with a seven inch Samson um, tablet. Now I'd never, had a tablet up front before, so it was all novel to me. I was used to riding around with my six inch or five inch phone, and that screen always seemed bigger than the average and pretty, pretty good. However, suddenly having this big screen gave a whole different sort of feel to, to, to your riding. Especially if you're doing uh, fast mountain twisty roads, you could see the curves coming in front of you. You could work out where the next bend was going to be. I found that really useful, especially if you're going at pace. Uh, it gives you a chance to quick look down, big enough screen, you can see all these, all these bits of terrain coming in, coming in front of you. So, outside of that, of course, there was a negative to the, the PR7's tablet system. It was a device fixed firmly to the motorcycle. So you couldn't just unbolt it with a simple clip or two, take it off, pull it indoors, charge it, um, download maps um, for the, your next day or whatever. You had to haul the bike in a hotel area or anywhere you could get some Wi-Fi uh, and connect to it and do it that way. And sometimes it was pretty slow with poor Wi-Fi in these places. You know, half an hour, 45 minutes sometimes downloading maps. So I found that a bit of a pain. But the, the system overall I thought was a great idea. So when I came back, I started looking around at what other devices uh, were on the market. and I know if you're a biker and you're just doing um, tarmac adventure riding, I don't think it matters too much. You can buy, <coughs> excuse me, you can buy a TomTom -tom and a Garmin system, plonk it on your bike, all the maps are loaded up, and um, it's glove touch, touch sensitive, robust as anything, you can go anywhere with it. But if you're someone like me who does uh, adventure road riding, and you want to do the Trans-European Trail, or some fairly serious off-road riding, you want to be able to have a device which can have open source maps, uh, which gives you a different terrain level. And also you can plonk on top of that some GPX files. Now, a lot of people who do trail riding and the like will use something like a Garmin Montana. I loathe the Garmin setup, unfortunately. I don't like their mapping systems. I don't like the way uh, you have to build your routes in and so on. It's a, it's, I find it a complicated, burdensome system. So there had to be some, something more, more, more useful and easy to, to use. So looking around, I came across this thing called um, the Carpe system from Thought Racing in Portugal. And they, they have a device which is basically a Samsung tablet and they have their own locking mechanism that locks it into a protective um, cover and simple bolting mechanism onto the bike. You can remove it and put it back on as easy as you like. Um, and I thought this was an excellent idea. They also have uh, some controls which you can uh, fix onto the handlebars. And from these, they have a Wi-Fi link uh, to the tablet, which allows you to toggle through the menus and find waypoints. Seems like a great idea. The problem with the Carpi system, though, I get the feeling it's set up mostly for people doing rally raids and fairly, um, fairly heavy-duty racing style um, riding, which wasn't really for me. 
it's an expensive system and I thought maybe there's, a, there's some technology on there I don't particularly need. The one wonderful thing about the Thought Racing Carpe is they have this overlay called DMD, the Drive Mode Dashboard. Now you can download the Drive board map, uh, Dashboard onto any other Android device. So it's a, it's a lovely system they've got. And what I've done is I've downloaded it onto a Samsung Galaxy Tablet Active 3. It's an 8 inch screen and I have all the same um, systems that you get on the, the Carpe system um, barring one major feature. Yes, yeah, so the Carpe's uh, setup will allow you to have the interface with the o OBM sensors which unfortunately you don't have if you're using uh, an active tablet. Now if you're not planning on doing uh, rally road racing and you're going to be doing just general um, off-road riding like myself, doing the TET and, and doing normal adventure riding, it's probably not such uh, an important issue for you. So th there's a definite uh, plus to having the Carpe if rally raid and, and rallying is your thing. If you're not, as I say, I think the Tab Active 3 probably will fit the bill for you. So with their uh, drive mode dashboard, it gives you an interface here. You can choose which quick active um, apps you have set up. You have a menu at the bottom where you can go in and here we have all the apps that sit on my device. And you can have the roadbook system if that's what your thing is. And we'll go back home here. So I have mine set up here with uh, my Guru Maps here, which is what I use for all my off-road riding. So this is a base map and I can drop in from the TET. I can pull down uh, whatever uh, GPX map I might want to take. So if I'm going off to Portugal or off to Albania, I can pull in the GPX file for that, drop it onto Guru Maps and away I go. Done. And then I've got Copilot Maps up here which is what I use for riding uh, through main roads, through cities, um, what have you. And then I have a notepad up here. Uh, I have a speedometer here and a clock and basic stuff. Uh, the other handy thing with this uh, Active Tab 3 is you can have a split screen. So on the one side I can have my uh, Guru Maps running on the, on the, say I'm doing a tet route, I can be following that. I can have some notes here to remind me that there may be some places I want to stop and have a look at, take some photographs. So I can split the screen if necessary. So that's a handy thing. So the Tab Active 3 um, comes with a tough drop proof case, a little stylus pencil, which you can use to um, make notes if you don't want really to use your thumb or your glove. It will work with the glove and it will work with your finger, but you can use this as well. The the way I've mounted it is I've got a RAM mount which is designed specifically for the Tab Active 3. It just clips in here, like so. It has uh, the classic pin system at the bottom for charging, where you just drop the USB into your charging point on the motorcycle. It has a very open back here so you can uh, plenty of space for air to pass through and keep it nice and cool. One inch RAM mount. I've also uh, just nibbled away uh, a little bit of the casing here so I can put in a charging cable directly into the Samsung tab itself if for any reason these pins fail. So at the moment that seems like a pretty good setup. It's pretty robust. And if we look at the um, if we look at the differences between the Thork Carpe system and the Active Tab 3, the Carpe tablet, which is also a Samsung, comes with an 8 gigabyte RAM, a 128 gigabyte memory, it has a big powerful battery, it's a 7-inch screen. It's IP67 rated and it's military grade 810G.
So it's a pretty tough device. You can drop it in the water, you can throw it at the wall pretty well and it's, it's gonna bounce off and not cause you any problems. The tablet Active 3 has an eight inch screen. It's IP68 rated, it's military grade 810H rated. So a little snivel above uh, the Active, the, uh, the Carpe, but uh, so small that it doesn't really matter. But it's also a, a tough device. You can drop it in the water, you can throw that at the wall, not worry about it. So really the main differences between the, as, as far as I can see, the Carpe and the Active 3 is that if you want to do, um, if you want to have the handlebar controls and you want to have uh, the ability to connect to the sensors on your motorcycle and get up to date information uh, as to how your bike's performing, you're gonna go down the Carpe system. And perhaps if you want to do serious off-road rally racing, it may be more suitable for you. But if you want to just do general um, adventure riding, you want to do the tech, you want to do off-road, and you want to have a bigger screen with an easier system for dropping your GPX files in, you want something that's robust, Android, so it's fairly uh, simple to update, simple to get apps for, um, I don't think really you can beat this. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the advantages with this, I can just take it off, bring it into my hotel, <clears throat> charge it up, watch Netflix, um, catch up with things, uh, all on a nice size tablet. Um, and I guess the other big advantage is financially wise, it works out with the RAM mount at about half the price. So depending on your needs, I would say this is certainly worth giving a serious look at. I'll drop a link in the bottom uh, to both of the systems and the mapping systems that I use, the Guru Maps and Copilot. And any questions, drop me a line. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you all soon. Thanks very much for watching.